I don't make anybody be born again. So what did I mean when I said I would like to be a means of people being born again? What, what, does, what do you mean be a means? And I'll read you the verse from which I'm drawing out that mandate. This is 1 Peter 1, 23 and 25. Since you have been born again, now watch this carefully. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable through the living and abiding word of God, this word is the good news that was preached to you. Whoa. John Piper, don't you take lightly what's about to happen here. People are born again, not by perishable seed, like a husband could deposit in a wife, but by imperishable seed that the Word deposits in a soul. That's how it happens. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, and faith is the first cry of the newborn soul. So, oh, how we should pray that not only will the term be clarified over against our culture, and not only will Christians fall in love with what has happened to them and be amazed every day that they discover more about what God has done in their lives, but that also those who are dead in trespasses and sins will find the Word of God and there's life. So God uses the instrument of His Word. He doesn't leave us without some sense of how does this happen in the world. It happens by the instrument of His Word. My Word cannot make it happen. But when the Holy Spirit takes my Word, if my Word is faithful to this Word, then the Holy Spirit makes a rapier out of it. It goes right to the heart. People find themselves laid open and life and suddenly they see Christ in holy new ways and they cast themselves upon him for mercy. I feel that I am taking into my hands in these days eternal souls. And I feel very, very nervous about this, except for God. I feel like I've got people in my hands of two kinds. There are many kinds, but the one kind is I'm so, so solicitous of the tender soul, so prone to doubt. He or she just kind of hangs on by their fingernails week after week in life. And they're going to sit under these messages with these words. And I know the threat to their soul just to preach about the new birth is going to be like, I don't know if I am. And then there's this other kind of person, so absolutely cavalier about spiritual things. You're here and you're thinking, oh, how long is this going to last? I just, I would really like to get out of here. Because there's just, it is of zero interest. Eternity is a blank. Jesus is boring. And a new computer game would be heaven. I mean, that's, that's the other kind of person. And I'm so jealous that that person not believe they're born again. How do you do that? How do you preach this message so that this person doesn't go under and this person doesn't... Oh, sure. Everybody's born again because we're all imperfect. So, I'm simply saying, as I approach these messages, I feel helpless. I feel like, how do you do this? And I'm, I'm, I invited you last time and I invite you again. Would you please pray? This is a very important series in the life of our church. And I cannot handle this on my own. I cannot 
manage these, the, the bigness of these realities with this little mouth and this little brain. God has to move on these services to protect the, the babies, the little lambs, the little, little sheep, and, and to just wallop the other guy so that they know I'm, I'm not there. Now how, do you, how do you do that? God can do that. God can take five loaves and two fish and feed 5,000 people. He can take this mouth and, and caress the lambs and whop the, the uh, presumptuous. Jeremiah 33, 8 clarifies, I think, what, what is going on here in the water thing. It says, I will cleanse them from all the guilt of their sin against me, and I will forgive all the guilt of their sin and rebellion against me. That assumes Right now, I'm dealing with a person with a record as I put my new spirit within him. i got to deal with the record. And I'm dealing with it with this imagery of water. I'm cleaning him up. I'm canceling it out. I'm going to have my son die for these sins. But forgiveness and cleansing are not Enough. It's why both. Water and spirit. Water and spirit. They're not enough. We need a new way of seeing, a new way of thinking, a new way of valuing. If we're gonna if we're gonna end up in heaven and want to be there, we need to be new, not just forgiven. Forgiven people who hate spiritual things won't be happy in heaven. And therefore, they won't be there. So I want to end on this amazingly hope-filled set of verses we're back at the text now, Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. Please love these verses. They have meant so much to me in the last couple of days. I paused a few times in my preparation. I closed my eyes and I said, Thank you that I'm alive. Have you come close to dying? Been at the bottom of a pool, have a wave knock the feet out from under you when you're a little kid, just miss a speeding car by a quarter of an inch. How do you feel if your dad sweeps you up and grabs you out of the wave, or you make it to the top of the pool, or (sighs) took a layer of paint off but didn't kill me? How do you feel? That's what I want you to feel. Only way more. God, being rich in mercy, out of the great love, so rich in mercy, great in love, made us alive. By grace you have been saved. So if you've ever wondered, where's a verse where I can always go to make sure I understand the word mercy, the word love, and the word grace? There it is. Let's go there. (laughs) <laughs> it just is so clear. I was dead. Mercy was rich. Grace was free. Start sounding like a gospel song. Mercy there was grace and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied for me. Grace, mercy, love, because he made us alive.
We are apt to teach correcting, gently loving, displaying, hopefully, some of the glories of Christ in our way of loving our enemies. Demon, oppressed and controlled enemies, even if they like us. And God may, and this is the new birth happening here, grant them repentance. What's that? You know the word metanoia? Change! Or maybe like this. (laughs) Suddenly, what was boring or hated is interesting and necessary and beautiful and crucial and everything is changing unto a knowledge of the truth. And you know what Jesus said about truth? You will know the truth and the truth will finish it from everything by which you're bound through sin and Satan. So the sequence seems to be we do teaching. I'm going to get to this in a couple of weeks about how the new birth is brought about. But here we're, we're talking. We're talking. We're loving. And God may open Regenerate, change, heart transplant, give faith, give repentance, knowledge happens. You remember this illustration I've used before. I love it. I'll use it again. In the dark, we get this brooch hanging around our neck. We love to fondle it. It's just our favorite brooch. And then the gift of light is given, and we look down. It's a cockroach. It's a cockroach hanging on this string around my neck. We rip it off and we throw it away. That's what happens when you're born again. Freedom is to do what you want to do. And the new birth is designed to make you want holiness. This event of God's love moving into our lives and sovereignly calling us into being as children of God, that is, making us alive, raising us from the dead spiritually and causing the new birth, that event, according to this text, secures that we will one day be perfected into the likeness of Jesus. Let's see that here. Verse 2 connects the love of God and our present life as His children with the future like this. Beloved, those loved by God in this way, beloved, we are God's children now. You don't have to wait for this. You don't have to wait for the judgment day to see if you're a child of God, like some religions teach. We know we are children of God now. What we will be has not yet appeared. In other words, you don't look at anybody that looks like a child of God. We get sick, we die, we get upset with each other. Good night. There is nobody on the planet who looks very much like a child of God. And so we're incognito. Walking around, dressing just like the world does, you know. Does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know... Now, there's the phrase I'm going to underline. We know when he appears, we will be like him. Because we'll see him as he is. And evidently, when you see him in the twinkling of an eye, replica. But now look at the logic here. We are God's children 
now. We don't yet see, hasn't appeared yet, the fullness of the beauty of what that's going to mean when the whole creation bows down to us. But we know. Now there's the link. Love of God, behold what kind, incomprehensible love of God coming to dead enemies, quickens us and calls us into being His children so that we know we are the children of God, we are the children of God, and now we know something else about the future. Namely, when He comes, we're going to be like Him. None of this question mark, oh, I wonder if we'll make it at the last day. I wonder if I'm in the 144,000 or something weird like that. We're going to make this thing because we know who we are. 